Another blow to cash-strapped Venezuela. A U.S. federal judge ordering the seizure of Venezuela's only sizable U.S. asset, the familiar Citco Petroleum. Will this halt in an important cash flow for the regime be the straw to break its back? Here now is Vanessa Newman, asymmetric uh, president and CEO and author of the book Blood Profits. Uh, Vanessa, first of all, how badly do you think this is going to hurt the Maduro regime? It's huge. It's huge. This was the only remaining really economic lifeline other than maybe, you know, drug trafficking that is still available to the Venezuelan regime. Uh, basically, and it hits it in two ways. Uh, the U.S. still remains its, its biggest market because Citco has the refineries that can refine this very heavy crude. And it also, it's, it's also a way of the U.S., by allowing the seizure of these assets through the debt, the U.S. therefore doesn't have to sanction the entire Venezuelan oil industry, this pretty much has the same effect. Yeah. It'll you know, and it, 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 it also, Citco also produces a lot of the lubricants that are needed even to draw the oil out of the, of the Venezuelan territory. So not only can it not sell to the U.S., mar will it not lose the asset that gives it access to U.S. dollars, it also gives, limits its access to the raw materials it needs for production. So this is, this is huge. The, the, the thing that this people have to keep in mind, though, is that Venezuela already, the, the PDVSA is the name of the company, the Venezuela an oil company. It was already in shambles. Going back to Hugo Chavez when he replaced all the serious Correct. engineers who worked for the company with his cronies, and they essentially ran it into the ground, right? Correct, exactly. So all of this really started in 2002 when you had a coup, a, a coup attempt against Chavez, and then you had an oil uh, seizure. Uh, a freeze in the oil production that PDVSA didn't like what Hugo Chavez was doing with the oil company. So they ceased production. They went on strike. Mm -hmm. Chavez then uh, put, cleaned them all out and put in the military in charge. That was the beginning of the end. Yeah. And oil when the cronies got high. in charge and they kicked out the people who knew what they were doing, it just exactly. went down. But uh, let me just ask, bottom line here, there's yeah. $150 billion in international debt outstanding with Venezuela. They're yep. behind. They're delinquent on $5 billion so <laughs> far in payment. Yep. Uh, they were relying on some of that Citco income to pay off some of those debt. They won't have that anymore. So no. they're going to go into default very soon, are they not? Oh, absolutely. And this and the Treasury decision, which was about two weeks ago, to allow trading in the 2020 PDVSA bond uh, seemed like, oh, a generous gesture. No, it was about the failure of Citgo. By allowing the trading, tra by the trading in the bond, it allowed the bondholders to make a claim. So they've opened it up with this defunct Canadian mining company called Crystalex for $1.4 billion. Now the bondholders will come. This is a two-for-one for the U.S. Yeah. government. Uh -huh. It really is the last thing that will really push over the regime change or the Maduro regime, mm. and it also sticks it to the Russians. The Russians owned 49.9 percent of Sitco. Mm. If these other claimants come in, the Russians also lose wow. access to that. So, so it's, it's a twofer. It's a twofer. It's a twofer. All right. We've got to leave it wow. at that. Vanessa, thank you very much. Good stuff. Thank you. Appreciate it.